Now the problem that's going to occur is this. Right now, it has no way of distinguishing me from anything else in the scene. All right, and that means if I were to put another cube here and put it, let's see, right about here, let's say. I think that's about right. And I make that into a physics rigid body. If I hit play, look at that. Oh, let's get it a little bit. A little bit closer right there. Let's try that. So to kind of get it right in front front. There we go. Now, even though I am standing over here and I am forward, it's drawing a line to me even though the box is on the left-hand side or right-hand side. Yep, right-hand side. So it's detecting the box, not me. And in fact, I could run all the way around and it detects me over on the left-hand side, but only for a brief second because it's focus goes right back on this box, a stationary unit. So this is where we turn on masking. Okay, And masking is a very, very cool feature that I could just kind of been poking around with lately. So if you go in here to start a mask, it's very simple. We have to de declare a variable inside the function. It's what it's called is on, doesn't matter. I'm going to call it layer mask and it is equal to one less than eight. And it's an absolutely less than K. Now, what I could do here is now put this layer mask into effect right here and right here and how does this work well anytime I need something to interact with the player but not uh, the scene like this smart cube for example so the smart cube is seeing this object this object becomes obsolete I need to go in here and make a new layer. And the layer is on 8. So there's where your 8 comes in. And this one's going to be called, uh, how about player? Sure. It doesn't matter what you call this. It's on the 8th layer. But what happens is, here's my smart cube. I need it. And I need my first person controller to be on that layer. Now, anything that's not on the layer will not interact with each other. So, there we go. Whoops. This is asking me, do I want to add the children? Yes, change children. So, all the children are part of that layer, too. So, now I have a smart cube on player. I have this on player. But this one is on default. So, if I hit play, what's going to happen is my test stays true. I have this cube that does not see me yet. And when I get to the left of it, yes, it does see me, or right. Perfect. So that is very important because if I put a door on a building, the building has some substance. So if I have the substance there, you know, like the other walls of the building, mind you, now it's not going to detect the other walls. It's only going to detect me as the player. So now that we have this very complex code set up, which is not complex at all, but now that we have it set up, let's use it in the next example. Now this next example is going to take a very, very long time to kind of put it in together because we still have to make something. We have to make a cell. Uh, we have to make a door and then bring it into the scene. So right here, 
Um, I'm going to say this is probably going to be enough for somebody to type in a small class. Uh, I got to rely on some students can't type as fast as other students. And I definitely want them to get the concept of this. So this is going to be called Project 4 and it's going to be called Raycasting Example. And now after this, we're going to have Project 5. And Project 5 is going to be a door, a very simple door. Alright, so go ahead and save this project out. And also I want you to make a duplicate of this project so we can go on to Project 5. And I'll do that in this video. That's very simple to do. We head over to Unity. Here is Project 4. I'm just going to duplicate it. This is going to be Project 5 now. And in here, I'm going to have a Project 4 Unity. I need to name that Project 5 Unity. There we go. All right, meet you in the next example where we're going to model something in Maya very quickly.